After watching Netflix show Three Body Problem, have you wondered why Santee Civilization left their home planet to colonize Earth? Are you still wondering why Santee kept suffering all the catastrophic events from drying to the Ice Age on their home planet? Then this video is for you. Hello, I am Homo Pretelateris. Let's unlock the secrets of the captivating Three Body Problem show with me. From the gravitational physical dances of celestial bodies to the evolutionary biology odysseys of civilizations, I dedicate this video to my beautiful wife and to our son, which she is about to bring to our curious world. So, why the Santi civilization daring to move from their home planet to Earth, as shown in the Netflix series Three Body Problem? Step by step, let's follow the science behind the show. Let's imagine the abstract two objects in space, which are close enough to each other. It can be any two objects, two planets, two stars, and, uh, and a planet and a star. This system is simply called two-body problem. Due to gravity around both objects, they start moving or orbiting around a single point. This point is called barycenter. So, the main goal of two-body problem is to find the distance A and B of two objects' centers to a barycenter at each moment of time. These distances depend mainly on two body masses. If they have the same masses, the distances A and B are always equal to each other at any moment of time. But if the mass of one object is bigger than another, then the barycenter is located closer to the bigger object. Therefore, distance A is always shorter than distance B in the two body problem. Now, let's consider an ultimate case. One of the objects is really, really bigger, like in billions and billion times bigger compared to another object. In this case, the barycenter is located in the center of the bigger object. Thus, the bigger object does not move, while smaller one is resolving around the center of the bigger object. For simplicity, the trajectory along which smaller object is moving can be viewed as a circle. This, this, this is the situation between the Earth and the Sun. Circular trajectory, the solution of the two-body problem in the ultimate case. The important question now is how stable or how permanent this trajectory is in two-body problem. The answer is, it is very stable. Therefore, we can conclude that the solution of two-body problem is a circular trajectory which persists infinitely long in time. Now, let's move on to three-body problem. As you may have guessed, in this case, the task is to find the trajectories of three objects attracting each other with their gravities. These trajectories will depend on objects' masses, initial velocities and positions. For this case, I would need to use a computer simulator I found online. I copied the link to this simulation in the video description below. As you may see, even if all three objects have the same mass, there is no stable solution for this problem. The trajectories are irregular and have very complex paths. Object trajectories will not persist in time. The main difference between two and three body problem is predictability, meaning that in two body problem we can always predict what the particle position will be tomorrow, in one year, and for example in 1000 years. Whereas in three body problem the motion is chaotic and we can't predict where the object will be in the future. I will skip the mathematical details on two and three body problem in this video. They are rather complex and cumbersome. If you wish to learn more about the math behind the three body problem, I refer you to the Goldstein book of classical mechanics. Let's come back to the Netflix show. Now, listen very carefully, guys. Even though it is called three body problem, in fact, we are dealing with the four body system. Senti planet is orbiting around three stars. Again, one planet and three stars. All together, there are four objects. In order to find positions of four objects in time, we have to solve four body problem. You can imagine that if three body problem has no stable and unpredictable solutions, then to predict the trajectories of four objects, again, one planet and three stars, is far more complex and impossible task. So, um, why did Santi leave their own planet and went to Earth? Here we have to slowly transition from astrophysics to evolutionary biology. 
Every star is a very hot object. The temperature of a star is between 5 and 10,000 degrees. As we move away from a star, the temperature around decreases and eventually drops down to 0 degrees. But there is a region around every star where it is neither not too hot and not too cold. This region has a ring-like shape and it is called the habitable zone. If there happen to be a planet around a star which is located in a habitable zone, then there can be liquid water on the surface of this planet. Therefore, we can define a habitable zone in a more precise way. Habitable zone is a distance around a star at which liquid water could exist on planet's surface which orbits this star. If there is a liquid water on a planet's surface, it can support necessary biochemical reaction to generate life. In other words, life on a certain planet can exist if this planet located inside habitable zone. Let's look at the two civilizations shown in the Netflix show, Human and Sun T. Humans live in two body system, Sun, Earth, and Earth happen to be lucky to be located inside Sun's habitable zone. If you look at the entire solar, solar system, Venus, Mars, and the rest of the planets are not that lucky. It's too hot on Venus and uh, too cold on Mars to support life, as far as we know at the moment, at least. As I mentioned earlier, the object trajectories in two-body system is very much stable and predictable. Therefore, the positions of the habitable zone around Sun is very much stable and predictable too. Since by some amazing coincidence the entire Earth's trajectory happened to be inside of Sun's habitable zone, then it will stay there forever and it will never escape it. So the conditions to support life on Earth will be persist forever as well. Nature can take its time to conceive and develop life on Earth. Let us look at the life evolution on Earth in more details. Earth started having a stable hydrosphere 4.2 billion years ago. The first organic chemical molecules emerged 4 billion years ago. It took another half billion years for those molecules to combine and create first self-replicated molecules such, such as DNA. The first cells emerged around 2 billion years ago. Then life started really to bloom. First cell evolved into bacteria, bacteria evolved into fungi, corals, fish. Then life got out of the water and started evolving into reptiles, dinosaur, primates, and finally, around 100,000 years ago, into us, humans. The main conclusion, it took 4 billion years to evolve from the first simple organic molecules into humans. And all this process was able to proceed because Earth is located inside Sun habitable zone. And Sun habitable zone remains stable forever because Sun and Earth's trajectories are stable, so the life has a lot of time to develop. Sun and Earth's trajectories are stable because Sun and Earth is too bad a problem. If you think about it, you realize that we got really, really lucky, and the fact that life biochemistry exists is almost a miracle. Moving to the Santi civilization, let's remember they live in four body system, three stars and Santi planet. Three star system implies there are the three habitable zones, but the trajectories of the three stars and Santi planets are unpredictable because this is four body problem. Therefore, it is impossible to predict the configuration of habitable zone in 1000, 1 million or 1 billion years. And of course, there is no guarantee that the sun T planet will be staying inside of the habitable zone of one of the stars. The universe played really, really a cruel joke on this poor sun T civilization. Remember, it took 4 billion years for human to evolve on Earth. But apparently, Santi did not have this luxury and had to fight with the laws of physics to survive, because their evolution keeps in interrupting. Life on their planet can evolve as long as it is inside of one of the star habitable zones. Santi calls it stable era. When it escapes the habitable zone due to chaotic trajectory, then the chaotic era is covering the entire Santi planet. If planet is getting too close to the stars, it is getting too hot and dry. If it is getting too far from the suns, it is too cold. Sometimes a cheap planet may return to the habitable zone. Stable era begins and they have to de regenerate the masses. 
and recover their civilization from whoever survived the chaotic era. Since can stay in habitable zone for another billion years or two, their civilization will evolve and develop. And then another chaotic era arrives and life nearly gets wiped out. Then they return to the habitable zone and stable era begins again. And this unpredictable process goes on and on again and again, simply because Sanchi planet is orbiting free body system. I think we all can take a page from Santi's book. The brain develops only when it must solve complex problems. Santi's entire existence around three stars is a very complex problem. So no wonder they developed the communication methods faster than speed of light. Then de they developed soft phones based on quantum entanglement to spy on people using higher dimensions they unfold. They created holograms on humans' retina. They used all means necessary to simply survive, and the desire to live made them achieve outstanding technological progress. At the end of the first season, people started mimicking Santi methods of survival and started reaching the speed of 1% of speed of light. The main lesson humanity must learn here, you either evolve or better yourself or you die. As simple as that. The main rule is always relevant during the entire history of life on Earth. Don't waste your time on small and irrelevant actions. I suggest for you to start your own business, write a book, start a YouTube channel, do something which makes you better. If you are fascinated by mysteries of the universe and our place within it, join me on this exploration journey. Reach out via my Instagram or leave a comment below. Let's unravel these cosmic puzzles together. In summary, we embarked on an intriguing adventure from stability of Earth's two-body system within the star's habitable zone to the unpredictable and harsh conditions of Santi civilization, navigating the complexities of a three-star body system. This tale of cosmic survival not only highlights the resilience required to adapt and thrive in the universe, but also serves us as a compelling metaphor for our individual and collective journeys. As we wander on the evolutionary marvels of our world and the boundless challenges beyond, let's carry forward the spirit of curiosity and determination exemplified by our exploration today. If today's journey through the stars and the story of survival against cosmic odds has ignited a spark within you, don't let that curiosity die. I encourage you to continue this exploration with me on our next video where we will dive even deeper into the mysteries of cosmos and perhaps uncover more lessons the universe has to teach us. Remember, the vastness of space, there are always more to learn, more to discover and more to overcome. So make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell below and join me on this endless quest for knowledge. Together, let's unlock the secrets of the universe, one mystery at a time. Above all that, remember, always think in terms of big picture.